Workers' compensation. You may know it's required for most employers in most states, but wondering, how does it work? Meaning, I know I get a policy, but what happens after that? Good question, and I'm gonna answer that for you right now. Hi, I'm Gordon Coyle, and welcome to my channel, where I talk about business insurance and risk issues on the minds of business owners and entrepreneurs like you. In this video, I'll explain how workers' compensation insurance actually works. As I mentioned, workers' comp is a state requirement in most states when you have employees. Most employers purchase a policy from an insurance company to satisfy that legal requirement. Beyond the policy, workers' comp works to cover employees who are injured or become ill on the job and pay for their medical costs and lost wages if they require time away from work to heal and recuperate. The workers' compensation policy protects both the employer and each employee of the employer in different ways. The employee is secure in knowing that if they suffer an injury or an illness on the job, that they have statutory benefits to cover them for medical bills, hospitalization, and lost wages. But workers' comp goes beyond that to also cover vocational rehab, funeral and survivor benefits if an employee is killed on the job, and long-term compensation for permanent injuries. The employer knows that workers' compensation stands between them and financial ruin should an employee be injured. In addition, Section 2 of the workers' comp policy also protects the employer if they're sued by the employee or their family for extraneous circumstances. Now, before I continue, can I ask you to smash that like button and subscribe? That'll help my channel grow and get more views by business owners like you. Thanks. I'm often asked, does workers' comp cover all injuries? The answer is no. There are circumstances where workers' comp does not respond, and the most common example I've seen is when an employee is injured off the job. Usually, over the weekend, playing sports or working around the house and the employee doesn't have health insurance, so they try and fake an injury at work on Monday morning. In many cases, these frauds are caught by the insurance company or their employer, and it's not covered. And in situations like this, the employee may be accused of committing insurance fraud. Broadly, any injury or illness sustained outside of work and not performing a job-related duty is not covered. If an employee intentionally injures themselves, this is also not covered. If an employee is injured while committing a crime, this is not covered. A common situation I've seen is when an employee assaults another employee and is injured in the process of that assault and then files a workers' comp claim. An employee under the influence of drugs or alcohol who is injured on the job is typically also not covered. Now, rules vary from state to state, but these are the most common reasons employee injuries are not covered by workers' compensation insurance. Who pays for workers' comp? The employer pays the premium for workers' compensation, and no part of that premium is deducted from employee paychecks, like health insurance. It's entirely borne by the employer. Next question I often hear is, how does an employer buy workers' compensation insurance? I have a specific video on that subject that you can view here. But briefly, an employer in most states can buy insurance from several different sources, from an agent or broker like me, through their payroll service, or directly online from another provider. In many states, the premiums will differ from one insurance company to the next, so employers often shop around looking for the best deal, and I have a few thoughts here on that subject. First, if you have more than a few employees, you should consider purchasing workers' comp through a broker who has specific expertise in this line of business and can help you with safety, risk control, and claims management, as we do here at the COIL Group. Second, I'm not a big fan of engaging multiple brokers on the quest for the lowest costs. In many cases, a good broker, like myself, represents most of the best insurance companies writing workers' comp, so we can do the shopping for you and you avoid the hassle of engaging multiple sellers. In fact, I did a video on that which explains it pretty well. Third, if breaking up your workers' comp payments with each payroll is important to you, most brokers can get you a pay-as-you-go workers' comp policy so you don't need to bundle it with your payroll provider. Using your payroll company typically incurs additional fees, and again, a non-expert is handling what can be an expensive form of insurance and not add a lot of value to that transaction. Here's the bottom line. Workers' compensation is the simplest form of business insurance there is, but that doesn't make it necessarily easy. If you're looking for a team of dedicated experts to work with on your business insurance, including workers' comp, so that you're getting it right and keeping it right, then I'd love an opportunity to speak with you and see if we're a good fit for you and your business. 
My contact info is in the description box below. And in fact, there's a link there where you can book a call directly on my calendar. I promise when we speak, no aggressive sales tactics or other nonsense, just a conversation. Finally, here are two other videos related to workers' comp that you may want to watch as well. Thanks for watching, and please don't forget, like and subscribe.